Guess who ran out of time to make a video? So it is Creative Thursday, but as you may be able to tell, the day has already passed me by and I've basically run out of time to start any new creative task. Part of the reason I ran out of time today is that I didn't have a project in mind. I had one idea, but I wasn't too enthusiastic about it and I couldn't think of any other creative thing that I would like to do for a vlog this week. So instead today, I'm gonna talk a little bit about that question that all artists get asked, where do you get your inspiration? Whether you are a writer, musician, visual artist, filmmaker, you've probably at some point gotten the question, where do you get your ideas? And you've probably struggled with how to answer that question because let's be honest, ideas seem to come from everywhere and nowhere. They come from our lives. They seem to come from out of the blue and they just hit us one day. They come after we've been staring at the blank page. They come when we're in the shower. Ideas arrive however they arrive. But sometimes ideas also come from constraints. Abby talked about six word stories and alliterative stories and other kinds of form that you can use to dictate content. When you give yourself a rule set, you eliminate a whole bunch of possibilities immediately and narrow down your potential ideas to a much smaller subset. We do a similar thing during VEDS with our challenges, like Caleb threw out some general challenges, Tessa called out some VEDSy specific challenges, and they're all prompts to help inspire creation. I used to watch The Art Assignment, and so I was really excited when Sarah Green said she was coming out with a book. This book, You're an Artist. Assignments to Spark Creation. The book is formatted basically so that each art assignment includes an introduction to a particular artist and their work, followed by an assignment for you to take on, and the assignment usually has a list of instructions. Some of my favorite assignments in the book are the ones that don't necessarily instruct you to create a specific thing, like they're not telling you how to draw in a specific way or to take a photograph of a specific thing, but the art assignment encourages you to go out and explore the world and really notice your surroundings. One of these assignments comes from Jace Clayton, who is a DJ, and his art assignment was all to do with quiet. While you may spend a lot of time being forward-looking and productive, this activity forces you to pay attention in the present, become aware of the soundscape around you, and appreciate the quiet that exists if you can find it. One, go outside and walk in the direction that is the quietest. Two, continue until you're in the quietest place possible. Three, take a moment to absorb the silence. Four, document your quietest place with a photo or short video or write about it. Back in university, in one of my communications classes, we actually did something very similar to this. We had assignments that were all to do with the art of everyday life. And so you would get some kind of prompt and then you'd have to respond to it. The prompt might encourage you to go to a specific location or to write about a specific object or to recreate an old photograph. I've been thinking about all of this lately because when I was a young teenager, I used to carry a notebook around with me everywhere and I was constantly making notes for the great novel I was gonna write someday. I would write down little snippets of dialogue, things that I had overheard people say. I would write down observations about what people looked like or sounded like, all kinds of little things. As I've gotten older, I've fallen out of that habit, which is a shame because those notes were some of the richest sources of inspiration I ever had. All of us are here making videos on our various topics, and so I'm wondering, where do you get your inspiration? Do you find yourself needing prompts or challenges or constraints in order to work well? Do you keep a lot of disconnected thoughts in the notes app on your phone, or do you write things down in a notebook? Do you record voice memos or make mood boards on Pinterest? For me, I've found that some combination of plain text files on my computer and notebooks full of handwritten notes and sticky notes works well for me. Things get jotted down in point form mostly as I think of them and it's nice to be able to capture observations in the moments that they're happening. And I can do that on my smartphone now. I don't always have to carry around a notebook with me, though I do happen to like carrying around a notebook. I hope you've enjoyed this more thoughtful, meditative, creative Thursday. It's been interesting as the month goes on to see how I start to bend and twist the rules of the schedule that I set up for myself. In some ways, the schedule is a little bit limiting because I was sitting here thinking, oh gosh, it's creative Thursday, I have to find something to make. But at the same time, knowing that it's Creative Thursday meant that even if all I end up doing is a vlog to camera, I've greatly narrowed down the potential topics for me to talk about. 
Anyway, we're more than halfway through the month and this is where things start to fall apart and get weird. So I hope you enjoy these kind of casual chats and late uploads because there will surely be more of them in the future. And on that note, my friends and fellow Bedsies, good night and I will see all of you tomorrow. Thank you.